Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to another day of lots to accomplish. So today I have a pretty good size to-do list. We're gonna see what all we get done. We're gonna start out by making a Amish slash Mennonite recipe that I've talked about sharing with you all before, but we're going to do a pumpkin version and that is whoopie pies. I will share the original um, whoopie pie recipe here soon, probably in the next few weeks. But since we're focusing on a lot of fall type desserts and things um, and other recipes, I thought I would go ahead and share this. This is something that goes back to my childhood. Anybody that's been raised in the Mennonite or Amish type communities or like I was, I was raised in um, up until the age of 11, a sub church off of the Mennonites, but I would still consider it more of a Mennonite type church, a lot of the same beliefs. And this was something that we ate a lot in the fall or else we bought from other Mennonite stores in the fall time. And if you don't know what a whoopie pie is, it's something that's very popular in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and I would say probably Indiana as well. And it is a sandwich cookie. It's kind of a cakier cookie. You've got a cookie on top, cookie on the bottom, and then you've got a filling in the in between. And it does take a little bit of practice. I'm hoping that I, it's been a while since I've made um, whoopie pies in general, and so I'm hoping that it all turns out today. We'll see how it goes, um, because you don't want the cookie to be too dry, or else it just isn't a very good experience. And you also don't want it to be too moist either, so you gotta hit a good sweet spot. Um, so I'm hoping that we all, it turns out really well. If you wanna try making whoopie pies, I would suggest making a pumpkin whoopie pie just because they tend to be a little more fail safe and easier to do. So maybe if you make this recipe, then you can tackle the original chocolate and vanilla recipe. And there are lots of flavor combinations for whoopie pies. People have gotten very creative over the years, but I would say the more common ones that you will see is the pumpkin and vanilla the chocolate cookie with the vanilla filling, and also the chocolate cookie with the peanut butter filling. I would say those are the ones I see the most in stores in our area and just in Pennsylvania in general. If you go to Lancaster, you will see a lot of them as well. So I'm going to stop rambling. We're going to get started here. What I decided I'm going to do is mix up my cookies. You need to have the cookies completely cooled before you do the filling on the inside. So I'm gonna mix up the cookies. I've got my oven preheated and we are going to let them cool a little bit while we go out to a local pumpkin stand and we're gonna grab a few pumpkins. I thought that would be fun. That was one of the things I was hoping to get accomplished today. And so I thought, great timing. We can get those cooled down so when we come back, we can fill the pumpkin whoopie pies right away. Before we get started, I'm actually going to sift my flour. Um, this is not necessarily a, like you may see some whoopie pie recipes that do not call for this, but I'm going to do it just to help the fluffiness of my cookies. And you're going to do four and a half cups. I don't know if I just said that, but I'm reminding myself. <laughs> so I could use a flour sifter. I've had one in the past. I have looked high and low in my kitchen today and cannot find it. So maybe I decluttered it thinking I don't use it very often. Um, but I'm just using a regular sieve to do the sifting just to make sure we have a nice light flour. And I'm also going to sift my spices through this as well. So I wondered if I'd have to go downstairs in my cellar and get more flour, but I think I have it almost enough here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this where I'm just sifting the flour through and you don't have to have a fancy gadget. And I, if I did declutter my flour sifter is because I do not use it very often and I know that I have this tool that I can use instead. So that was probably my mentality on getting rid of the flour sifter. Before I sift the rest of the flour through, I'm gonna add um, some of my other dry ingredients. So you need a teaspoon of baking soda and then a teaspoon of baking powder. The ingredients for this recipe are fairly simple. So um, I, you can pretty much have most of it on hand. Now we're going to do a teaspoon of salt. 
and this is one good reason my salt has been a little bit um clumpy <laughs> lately and so this is a great um way to help that is to sift it so i'm gonna do that and then we're gonna do a teaspoon of cinnamon and i keep my cinnamon in this shaker because we use it on everything i use it in my coffee on pancakes just it's nice to keep in a shaker versus um a regular spice container. So we got a, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now we're gonna do half a teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, not whole cloves, ground cloves. And then we're also going to do half a teaspoon of ground ginger. And this recipe doesn't have nutmeg in it. You might find some that do, um, but this is what this one calls for. And this also, for some reason, is a little clumpy. I noticed when I got it out of my um, larger bulk container that it was a little clumpy. So again, good reason to be sifting it. So once you have all of those dry ingredients in, you can just keep on going with the sifting and all you have to do is just kind of hit the side of the sieve. Okay, so before we add in any of the flour that we just sifted, we're going to mix up kind of a wet batter a little bit. So we are going to do, I need to have my measuring cups here. I need a half cup. Now you can use vegetable oil. I probably will put that on the recipe below. Um, but this recipe, <laughs> whoopie pie, is one of the biggest drawbacks if you're someone that's health conscious is the filling has Crisco in it. I know, shocker. Um, it's not something I cook with. In fact, I have to buy it to make whoopie pies because I don't even keep it in my kitchen. I have no other purpose for it, but there's no other way to get the filling exactly right without using Crisco. Um, I know some people have tried lard, but the flavor really changes. So to help counteract or counterbalance that, since we don't eat a lot of vegetable oil, I actually don't have vegetable oil in my kitchen. Um, I am just using some avocado oil and we won't have quite as much vegetable oil going into it, but in the original recipe, it does call for vegetable oil, but you can replace it with this. So I did a half cup of that. Now we are gonna do, um, technically it's supposed to be white sugar, but I use cane sugar, so that's kind of halfway between. So we're gonna do one cup of cane sugar in with the oil, and whoo, then we are going to do two cups of brown sugar. What am I doing? Putting things back in the wrong thing. Two cups of brown sugar. And of course, anytime you have pumpkin going on, anything that's very, that's caramely and brown sugar kind of has caramel notes, um, it just complements it so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two cups of that. And one thing that's really nice about this recipe is they take into consideration that we are gonna need some egg whites for the filling recipe. So the batter recipe actually calls for two egg yolks. So we're gonna go ahead and separate the two eggs I have back here and we're going to put the yolks into the cookie batter and then we're gonna use the whites for in the filling recipe. So before we do the egg part though, I'm going to go ahead and just mix the oil and the sugars together. All right, I just grabbed this little ramekin and I've got my eggs sitting back here and I'm just going to do my best to not get any shells in it. Just toss the um, yolk back and forth. And I was thinking about it, I probably should get an egg separator again. I used to have one a long time ago. Um, I just haven't, I don't know why I haven't had one. Just with going into a more winter season, I do a lot more baking and it might be nice to have. <laughs> Oh goodness, might be nice to have um, a egg separator. Okay, all right, going to keep all of this whites just in a container over here. And I'm gonna dump in the yolk, mix that together. Now the last thing we're gonna add to this before we add in the flour is the vanilla. I have a little bit of vanilla, it's a teaspoon that needs to go in here. 
and we're going to mix this all together with the egg portion. All right, if you're someone that bakes a lot, you're probably at this point going, this is a very dry recipe. <laughs> well, here's the moisture. So here is the some of the canned pumpkin I made last year. I'm planning to can some this year as well, so stay tuned for that. I probably will film that because that's something that um, a lot of people do not do, but um, if you take a look in some great Mennonite or Amish cookbooks, you'll find some good recipes on how to can pumpkin. So I'm just dumping this all in here and then I'm gonna mix it in with the sugar uh, mixture I have in here. And then I'm going to slowly add my flour recipe uh, or my flour mixture by with just a measuring cup here. So I'm gonna scrape this together first. Just want it on kind of low and we're gonna add it in bit by bit. Okay, um, my batter is all mixed up and it is going to be a more, it's a little bit thinner than a traditional cookie batter um, because we have a more cakey consistency and I'm going to go ahead and use parchment paper. Now this is where you get to choose how big you want your whoopie pies. Some people make them really big, I've made them big. I've made them a little smaller in the past. I'm gonna try using this cookie scoop. I feel like they're gonna be a little smaller than what I want. Um, so I'm gonna kind of pile them up <laughs> and we'll try doing about three of them. Oh, that might actually not be a bad size. We'll try doing three. And I'm saying three because you need a top and a bottom. So I'm doing six technically on here at this size. And, but it will make three sandwich cookies and you know what this might be a perfect size I'm actually really liking this we'll see how it goes since we have little ones in the house sometimes it's nice to have um, not so big ones we usually if I make them big we tend to cut them in half a lot so we'll bake this up and we'll see how it goes I'm gonna go ahead and get another one going here Time for a little pumpkin stand haul. If you hear uh, Corey mowing in the background, that's what he's currently doing. <laughs> um, but I am really happy with this. Every year I kind of pick a different color scheme. I do think I'm going to get some Cinderella pumpkins yet too. I love, love what we've got so far. I think this weekend I'm gonna work on cleaning off the deck and if you guys are familiar with my channels, you know that I like to really dress up our outdoor spaces for each season 
and use that um, to its full advantage. And so mums are something I love to add in. I do have some planter boxes as well. So I think I'm gonna have to make a trip to an actual greenhouse to get a few things for that. So we will wait and see. But I have two spots where I have hooks to hang hanging baskets for the summer. Um, I created my own hanging basket planters for that. So this uh, fall, I think I'm gonna do these two up there. They are both yellow and they have kind of, you can see it peeking out there. They have kind of a gray pot that I thought looked really nice. So I'm kind of leaning towards yellows. That is not my natural tendency. Yellow is not my favorite color or anything, but I thought for something completely different than I've done other years, this would be kind of fun. Plus I love these with the, um, I don't even know what color to call this. Let me know in the comments what you would call this. I feel like it's a purple red sort of color, but it has that yellow center, which is just beautiful and brings a whole different color combination to a fall um, arrangement. And then obviously I picked out some more yellow looking pumpkins. I've got white pumpkins. The girls had fun picking these baby little pumpkins out. So we will wait and see how it all comes together. I will probably be filming that in another video, but I thought I would just take you along since it, I am taking you through my day with me today as we went to pick up this batch of stuff. And these things take a lot of room up in the car. <laughs> so getting these separately from like my other stuff from the greenhouse is great because then I have room for everything um, as I pick up things for the season. One thing that is a bit of a drawback living in central Pennsylvania is this time of year, the days get a whole lot shorter and it gets a lot darker out before I'm ready for it too. So I turned on all the lights in here. We got our stuff from the pumpkin stand and I actually just used a flour sack towel to cover up the cookies. Now we're going to put together our filling on the inside. Something that I have known about but never like connected it to making whoopie pies, especially because I don't use Crisco. I have no other recipe in my life I use Crisco for, um, was these individual cup wrapped cups of Crisco. And I did grab the butter flavored and it's just going to make it a whole lot easier if you've never ever worked with Crisco or never worked with Crisco then, um, it's kind of greasy, <laughs> it's, it's, it is a fat, and so having these will make it a whole lot easier to just dump it in and go instead of trying to scoop it into a measuring cup and all of that. I'm also going to be using some powdered sugar and some flour, but the first thing we're going to do is dump those egg whites in that we collected earlier, um, and I did put them in the refrigerator while I was off to the pumpkin stand. We're going to whip these and get them nice and foamy. So I'm actually going to be putting about four teaspoons of vanilla in here because I am making a double batch of filling because I did make a double batch of the cookies. And um, so while they were baking, I whipped up a second batch and kept them baking. So to the egg whites, we're not really looking to get meringue out of this, but just kind of getting them nice and aerated. Now I'm gonna add a fourth cup of flour for each recipe. So we're gonna add, have a total of a half cup of flour put into this. And actually, I'm going to put this on low and add it in as I go. Okay, to this, I'm going to put about two tablespoons of powdered sugar and then about three tablespoons of milk. But I am going to just make sure that we've got everything out of the bottom and putting all of this together. I almost forgot I was doubling this, so I need four tablespoons of powdered sugar. And I think this is just to create a nice base before we add the bulk of the powdered sugar in. 
and the Crisco. So I'm gonna go ahead and do six tablespoons of milk. Now to this, since it's a double batch, we're gonna do two cups of the Crisco. And it kind of unfolds like butter. I'm actually gonna open this up. And this has been sitting out on my counter, so it's pretty soft and I think it'll stir in rather nicely. So I'm gonna whip this with the milk before I add in the rest of the powdered sugar. All right, so I'm having some really big hesitations about this. I have never used Crisco that is butter flavored. I thought it would be great. It would be more like buttercream. It is a bit more like buttercream, but very different than like the traditional whoopie pie filling. So we're gonna see what my family says about this. <laughs> I have a feeling that my husband He's not gonna be over the moon about it, but we will see. He loves his things the way they've always been made. He's very much that type of an eater, so we will see. So all you do is fill the inside. Now you can decide if you wanna have double filling, however thick you want it to be. And because this filling does have milk in it, you will have to freeze these or refrigerate them. I freeze them anyways, that's how I store them. Most of the time, there you go, you have a great looking whoopie pie. Um, most of the time we end up eating them frozen. They are so, so good frozen. Um, and, or we will eat them out of the fridge. So it's not like unusual to store them in the freezer or the refrigerator anyways. Uh, but this particular filling does have the milk in it. Not all filling recipes do and I am really loading these up. I need to scoop a little bit out um, to make sure I don't have too much filling going on. And my children are actually waiting for some of this and I told them they can have this even though I'm getting ready to actually make dinner. Um, I told them they can have one of these because I mean, my goodness, it is the season. It is time for us to enjoy all the fall goodies for sure. And I'm sure my husband will want one after he's done doing the yard work outside. Okay, and if you go into any little Mennonite or Amish store in our area, you'll probably see the Whoopie Pies wrapped in Saran Wrap, and that's usually how we freeze them slash store them. So I'm going to wrap these all individually. So I am getting ready to make dinner, like I said. I'm gonna be making some biscuits and gravy tonight. We're gonna to use some of that freezer gravy that we've made together before. Such an easy meal. We're gonna do some mashed potatoes with it. And I think I'm also going to do some um, green beans as well. And then there's something else that we're doing this evening that I need to go and do as soon as I'm done with dinner, which will be a great companion to these for some dinner. Oh, I will give you the verdict on my family's thoughts because they all came through and had some of these as far as the filling and everything. But I need to go and pick up our apple cider. So there's a lot of places in our area. If you live in the north, New York, um, even in Virginia, a lot of our neck of the woods, you can get apple cider ordered whenever the apples are in season. So I ordered about six gallons and we will freeze a few gallons. We will also drink some um, over the next week or so. Cider is something that is fresh pressed. 
and where we get it from, it is not, ooh, I have some, <laughs> some frosting on my hands. Um, it is not pasteurized, so it's completely raw, so delicious, so fresh, so yummy, and they actually pressed it today, so it will be hot off the press, <laughs> in other words, and um, I need to go pick some of that up, and I'll show you what I do whenever we freeze it. So today was a true day of all the fall things, and um, that will be a yummy treat to have with these pumpkin whoopie pies after we're done with dinner. So I'm going to bag these up into gallon sized bags to throw in the freezer and then we'll get started in on dinner. I'm not gonna do every step by step on what I'm doing. I'll show you some bits and pieces just because I have shown these meals before the making the sausage gravy and also mashed potatoes. I've shown all of those things lots and lots of times on my channel here. All right, so the thoughts for the frosting um, using the butter flavored Crisco. Everybody seems very happy with it. My daughters think it's delicious. And my husband actually has a bit of a cold right now, Corey. And he said that he can't really taste a difference, which there is definitely, if his taste buds were working right, he could definitely tell a difference. Um, but he said that they're very good, what he could taste of it. So I think we have an okay winner. Will I ever use it again? Probably not. Um, just personally, I didn't think it was fantastic. The, the girls obviously did, but um, if you accidentally get it, no big deal. Um, but would I recommend grabbing it? Probably not. I just didn't care for it. I love buttercream frosting, but this is a flavored something, like a butter flavor. It's not real butter. And to me, it tastes very flavored. Um, but it pulls off as a good buttercream frosting and they'll work great. We'll pop these in the freezer and enjoy them over the next couple weeks. Oh, you have your apples in here too, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, do you know if he has any extra? I had ordered six, I had ordered six gallons, but I was wondering if I could get seven. Do you have extra? Yes, um, I think. Hello. Hello. Um, I had ordered six gallon, but do you have an extra one that I can have? I do, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, so if I get seven, then that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So how many did you get done in all? Oh, uh, there was 117 gallons. 117? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that isn't too bad. I think last year we had done 165 the one time. 165 last year. Oh, wow. All right, so we are back from getting the cider. It was so interesting to see it all in the cooler and with all the apples and everything. <laughs> And if you hear something over here, Corey's just over here taking his garlic cloves since he has a cold. Um, but we are gonna put these into the freezer. And to do that, you can't just take the full gallon of cider and put it in the freezer because it would blow the lid off of it. Do you want some of this to take with your stuff? Well, bring me a glass. <laughs> um, I'm excited to taste it. It was fresh pressed today. And here, you wanna dump probably at least about a cup or so out of the top so it's got some space. It's not gonna be extremely cold, but you can go ahead and take a sip. If you can taste it, can you not even taste it? That's good. Is it? Um, so we're gonna do that with every single gallon. So I'm gonna put them, really sweet. 
I'm gonna put the extra cup into this pitcher so we can have it in the refrigerator right now and enjoy it for this week. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of guess about how much I want out of the top. And we actually are getting ready to get a beef as well. So I'm not sure if all of these are going to fit in the into my freezers with everything else I have in there right now. And I may end up putting some of this into quart size, either jars or freezer containers. I need a rag. It's kind of spilling out of the top of this one. It's really full. So I'm not sure if I will end up freezing all of these in a gallon um, just because of the space and being able to kind of spread it throughout all of our freezers. So the people that we get this from are actually horse and buggy Mennonite, not Amish, horse and buggy Mennonite. They are called Joe Wanger Mennonite in our area. And um, they are great people to get things like this from for a great price. They often have very fair prices. So I get a lot of produce and stuff like that um, from them and from, that's where I get a lot of my, when I say local produce, I often am getting it from them. I get like my tomatoes and other things like that from them. This smells so good. I do not, I try not to do a lot of sugar on a regular basis and I know I'm not gonna be able to drink a ton of this, but I do want a little bit. It smells just delicious. Now cider is a little bit different than apple juice because it's raw and if you leave it sit out, you can actually ferment it and make an alcohol, like a hard cider out of it. So you do, that's why we freeze it. I am making a mess. Um, that's why we freeze it is because you can't uh, just leave it sit out for super, super long. And you can can it. I've actually seen home recipes to can it, but at that point it's turned into apple juice, not cider. Um, it's not the true cider. And another thing I would really love to do with this throughout this fall season is make some spiced cider, um, like to make it hot as a drink to take outside when we are going places or my husband actually plays ice hockey, Corey plays ice hockey, so that would be a great warm drink to take with us to that as well. So did you taste it? Yeah. All right, here you go, give it a taste. Tell me what you think, it smells so good. It smells like fall in a drink. Mm. <laughs> Is it good? Here, let me taste a little bit. Cheers. Oh, that's so good. Here you go. That is delicious. All right, so tomorrow we are actually going on a field trip with our homeschool group. I'm gonna take you all along with us, just give you a little peek into our world when it comes to education, I'm really excited about it. It is going to be very nature-centered and I'll tell you more about it tomorrow. But to get ready for that, we are going to be packing some lunches to take with us on this field trip. I'm going to, I pulled out a loaf of wild grain frozen sourdough bread. So I'm just gonna follow the instructions on it. It just says 450 is what I need to preheat the oven to. So I will preheat it to that and then their loaves um, you just set right on the rack. And I'm out of bread right now, so this is perfect that I'm able to pull it out. And we'll see if I get the sandwiches made tonight. You may see me very early in the morning doing that. I'm going to also put these whoopie pies into some freezer bags while that is preheating. I took all of the cider downstairs except for one gallon to leave up here and managed to squeeze it into the freezer. Things may need to get reshuffled here before long. Um, like I said, with the beef that we have ordered coming in a couple of days. It's always a tight squeeze when we first get any type of meat, whether it's pork or beef or some chickens because everything, you all know, I keep my freezer stocked pretty well and I like to do freezer preps and things like that. So it's always a matter of shuffling things until certain things get used up. So I thought this would be a great opportunity with school um, well on its way at this point for everybody for 
me to share what I'm gonna be doing for a packed lunch tomorrow and doing it without using lunch meat for a sandwich. Um, I do a lot of canned shredded chicken and so we make those into, we use that in melts sometimes. So that's actually what I'm gonna be doing is creating a melt that obviously will be cooled until it's eaten, but it's still so good, especially with the toasted bread. I do it on the cast iron with some butter. I'll show you all that. So I think I'm gonna do that. We have some grapes. Um, I may do a few like cold veggies just to eat. I'm not sure, I'm gonna see what I have in the refrigerator here. And then obviously some whoopie pies will be going with us too.
Good morning, friends. We are getting around and getting ready to head out the door early this morning. Um, we have a bit of a drive for our field trip. I think it's gonna be over an hour away. And I wanted to make sure that I am well prepared for dinner tonight. Does this always happen? No, no it does not. But I did meal plan this week and I knew that we were gonna be gone today and I knew we would need a good um, dinner that was kind of somewhat prepared for us when we come home. So we are gonna do pulled pork sandwiches. I also am going to make a coleslaw and stuff later. Um, but to get this rolling for dinner tonight, I'm going to be putting this pork butt into the crock pot. We're actually gonna do a kind of dry rub on it. So I have it out here for you to be able to see a bit better than if I were doing it in there. So all I'm gonna do is just take some mustard and I like to add the sauce after it's been um, prepared in the crock pot. And you can also add a little bit of broth to this depending on how you like to do it. So I'm just going to grab a spoon. So as you saw, I got all of the lunches packed for today, but I do think we are going to head to a really cute coffee shop that is not far from the place that we are going to be having our field trip at. I found it on the map. It's not an area that I'm familiar with at all, but it is here in Pennsylvania. And um, so anytime we're gonna go somewhere, I always like to see what cute cafes or coffee shops are around. So we'll probably grab a little bit of something to eat this morning and then they'll be able to have their lunches. For myself, I actually have a little thermos that I am heating up some frozen soup in the microwave right now that I will be eating for my lunch. Okay, so to this, I'm also adding this Cosmos um, dry rub. It's, a, it's the Honey Killer Bee. Honestly, my husband is the one that picks up a lot of these types of seasonings. He's a big um, barbecuer. We have a smoker, and so on the weekends, he generally does a lot of that. What's great about this is we'll have some leftovers. I've mentioned this before. If you hear my washer running, we got all the things running this morning. Um, but I, our family is not a big crock pot family, and so things like this are a great... Um, alternative or not alternative but one of the few crock pot meals we actually really enjoy I'm gonna rinse my hands all right and I'm going to I did make sure I want to mention this I did make sure that the fat side of the pork butt is facing up because that fat is going to go um, kind of drizzling down through the meat and cover the meat as it slow cooks now this is my pressure cooker but I will be putting this on the slow cook setting. I love, love this pressure cooker. I've had it for quite, a, quite some time now and it's huge. I mean, I don't know if you can see in comparison to a regular like Instapot. It's actually the Crock-Pot brand, but it works like an Instapot, but it's very large and has come in handy for many, many um, projects. So I am looking for my slow cook button. So I'm actually gonna put this on for the longest, I gotta make sure it's on low, there's a low and high setting on this one, for the longest time that I can, and then um, till we get home, I'll be able to check it and all of that. I just want it, I don't want it to go off while we are gone. And we've got everything set and ready to go. So let's go on a field trip. When I searched for a good coffee shop near the location of our field trip, I never realized that we would end up at Schmucker's Gardens in Millersburg, Pennsylvania. You guys, I was blown away by this place. The artistic flair that this greenhouse has and coffee shop is un real it is beyond gorgeous of course with all of the fall and autumnal touches here and there it is beautiful the sounds of the place i could just tell everyone there was having a wonderful time and just being able to walk through the gardens and greenhouse was beautiful i can't say that enough 
it just had such a great atmosphere and honestly we found out that in the next week they're going to be having a pumpkin festival so by the time you all see this it will be the following week i would definitely recommend checking it out I will actually leave the link to this exact place below in case you are in central Pennsylvania and you want to check it out. We love the coffee there and we also got some good little breakfast goodies as well. And after we went on our field trip, we actually came back and I was able to get a few more mums and pumpkins to fill my planter boxes and really just enjoyed it. They even had a great little activity space for the children. My sister-in-law came back with me after the field trip and we were able to let them play in some hay bales and some other things they had set up for kids. I'm just genuinely excited to know about this place. During the winter months, whenever I want a little taste of some warm weather, I can come here. The One of the owners I spoke with said that it is usually around 70 degrees year round. Um, and you can come visit even whenever it's cold outside. You all know how much I love house plants and they had a house plant potting station where you can come in and create your own planters and other things. I just really love this concept of just getting hands on and having an activity space like this one. Not only was the greenhouse beautiful, but they also had a shop there with a lot of home good and home decor and extra flower pots that you might enjoy using to decorate your home along with some fun stationary sticker paper type goodies. As you all know, I love that, love journaling, love books. And so that was a fun little added bonus to this stop. After finding that gem and of course a cup of coffee, we headed to the Ned Smith Center for Nature and Art. And we were able to join our homeschool group in a great scavenger hunt that explored the five senses in nature. And it was a great little game for the kids as we went through their trails that they had there. We were able to go on a nice little nature walk and hike through a lot of beautiful trees and leaves. I love this time of year getting outside and enjoying the great weather that we have here in central PA. And of course, it's a lot of fun for our daughters as they have fun with their friends and peers and explore and just have fun. I know I say fun a lot, but we really do. I love incorporating fun into our learning and into our schooling. And that's the part that's so great about being able to homeschool and really just dive in to learning in a real way, just like this. Yes. Yeah, we saw what? Bones. Bones. Okay, the next one says herbivore. Does anybody know what an herbivore is? No. A plant. Yeah, they eat plants. Did she eat any plants? Yeah. yeah. Yes. She did. Yes. We saw some leaves and some moss and some berries. Okay. This says omnivore. And that's somebody who eats both plants and animals. How many do you have stamped? Um, I have five. All right. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Color in it. Yeah, we found it. We found it. The it's correct green. potions liquid is a shade of green. Ooh, this one's one. caramel. Can I smell that one? one? It smells like candle. No. It does medium. That was white. Well, I'm going to Mushy. Squishy in a foamy way, but not slimy. Mushy. Can you no feel it, Hazel? Squishy, squishy, squishy. No holes, ridges. No holes, ridges. And then the pendulum. What's it feel like, Hazley? Bunch. I feel like mushroom. Yeah. I 
hope that you all got a lot of inspiration out of today's video. It was fun for me to film and just share with you a few days in our life and of course some meal prepping along the way. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment below. I love chatting with you all and hearing from you and give this video a like and I will see you all in my next video.